Hello, my name is Kelsey Cameron, and today I will be talking about what is a subnet mask, why it's important, and how it is used within subnetting. So first off, I'm going to reiterate something from a previous video that I made about what is a subnet and why it's important. Well, I mentioned some of the drawbacks of classful addressing in one of my other videos. And those drawback one of the main drawbacks is basically that either you're going to have too few addresses available or you're going to have too many and you're not going to be able to use them all. Subnet provides a solution to this because it lets you use all of your addresses by creating an extra layer of organization and allowing you to basically create different IDs, borrow some host bits to use as network bits, or a subnet, rather, and then that subnet will let you access all of your available address space instead of only the specific IDs that you're limited to. So let's say, let's say I only needed um, four, two to the four is 16. Let's say I needed exactly 17 addresses in my organization, and I'm going to, I have 8 bits to work with in a class C, so that's 2 to the 8th, and 2 to the 8th is, um, let's see, 32, 64, 128, yeah, 256, 256, so I'd have 256 addresses to use, but I only need 17, that's wasting a lot of, that, that's really wasting a lot, so subnets, I could add in those extra um, identification bits, and I could take two bits from the host or three bits from the host and basically create more address space for me to use. Um, or if I didn't want to, let's say I had a class B address and I didn't want to switch into a class C but I wanted more network usage, I could just create a subnet. So basically a subnet is like a, another layer of organization within a network that will let you use all of the address space. So then that brings me to the next question. What is a subnet mask? Well, a subnet mask is a series of set ones that will you can add to an IP address and get the network and subnet ID. So that's going to look like this right here. So in this example, I have the question, what valid host range is the IP address 196.168.129.25/28 a part of? Well, first off, the question is, what is this, what class is this IP address? Because of that 196 right there, we know it's a class C. Because class C is between 192 and 223. And, oh, I should, I should mention that this is actually an equal sign. It, it can be equal to 192. If it starts with 192, it's still a class C. So it's a class C, and class C means that you have 24 bits used for the network and 8 bits used for the host. But see this slash 28 right here? That slash 28 means that there are 28 set ones. So if we know that normally that this this has 28 bits for the 24 bits for the network, but in this problem it has 28 bits for the network, how many bits does that mean that our subnet ha ID has? 28 minus 24 means that our subnet ID has four bits. So you have the network, and then you have the subnet ID, and then you have the hosts. So right here, this number right here is an example of what this mask actually will look like. If I said, what is the subnet ID mask? There it is. Well, maybe, maybe you might want some clarification on exactly what defines a subnet mask. So, what is a subnet mask? Well, it is the binary number that can be added to an IP address to determine a subnet ID. So, going back to my previous example, if I take this mask, this number right here, this really long binary number, and yes, there should be dots if you just noticed that. It's four, four, dot. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. yeah, here we go. So I can actually take this number and it to any IP address in this network and then it will tell me what subnet it is in. It's kind of cool because you can see, oh, well, where did this come from? And then you might even be able to look at the different 
If you're in a really large organization, you can figure out, oh, this came from this department, this came from that department. So it's also kind of interesting from an organizational perspective, but that's not the reason it was created. Again, the reason it was created is to use up all of the address space and not waste anything. So I just told you that I can take this mask and apply it to any IP address in the network and get the subnet that I'm in. So if I want to find the valid host range for this network right here, before I know the valid host range, I need to figure out what subnet this is in. So I'm going to create a new sketch and show you. So my number, my IP address, is 196.168.129.25. For the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in binary because it's easier to work with in binary and it's important to have a good understanding of how binary works. In networks. 196. So I'm using a calculator. One second. 196 binary. Here we go. So 196 in binary is 11000100. And now I need 168 in binary. That is one zero one zero one zero zero zero, and then one two nine in binary. I'm sure that some of you guys are faster at this than I am, and you're probably already about to know what I'm gonna say, but you know, whatever. <clears throat> one zero 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 one. And now the most important one, this 25 right here. 25 in binary. I'm sure there is a faster way of doing this, but I just don't feel like doing it right now. So I have 11001. 11001. And remember, this has to be 8 bits, so there's actually three leading zeros in front of here. Okay, so this is my IP address converted to binary. Now, remember when I was mentioning what the sub subnet mask is and what the purpose of it is? It's to find the subnet ID of any IP address in the network. So what if I asked you find the subnet ID of, the, of this IP address? Because I need to find the subnet ID in order to know my valid host range. Because the valid host range depends on the subnet that I'm in. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the mask that I have in the previous slide, and I'm going to mask it with this large number right here. So I'm gonna mask one 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 dot one 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 dot one 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 zero 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 zero. So why are these all zeros? Well, because this is these are the available hosts that I have right here, and this is my subnet mask. This whole thing, this whole number is my subnet mask which means I can and it to anything to get the particular subnet that my IP address is in. So I'm anding it to this IP address to figure out which subnet am I in. So when I and it, all of these numbers stay the same, because 1 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 1. It's similar to how when you multiply by 1, the number stays the same. So this is just this is going to be the same number, that's going to be the same number, that's going to be the same number. Really the only number that's actually going to change is, is in the hosts. And if I and this, I know that I'm going to have zero 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 one zero 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 zero. So this is the subnet that I am in. Right here, those four bits. So that's subnet one. And this is important because it will help me determine the valid host range. If I know that I'm in subnet one, I know that I have four bits that are usable for the hosts, except I can't actually use all zeros or all ones, because all zeros is the subnet ID, and all ones is the broadcasting address. So if I go to, I'm going to go to a new slide and explain that a little bit more. So I know that my minimum of this, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Zero. My minimum actually can't be this number because this would be the subnet ID, as I just showed you. But, so that means that the minimum would have to be one more than that. So, 
that would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is 17. And the maximum would be the same subnet. Notice that the subnet doesn't change because I, once you're in the subnet, you stay in the subnet. It's kind of like you can't switch networks. So think of a subnet as an extension of the network. And then all of those valid host ranges are based on that subnet. So if this subnet is locked into place, what's the max value I can have here? Well, you're probably going to say all ones, but you can't use all ones because that is the broadcasting address. So it's actually one less than all ones. So it's one, 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 zero. And this number is actually 30 in decimal. So that answers the question. What valid host range is the IP address 196.168.1234? And that answer is, you go from 196.168.129.17 through 196.168.129.30. Why doesn't this change? Because this is your network ID. Your valid host range is all on one network. So it would make sense that your network ID isn't going to change. That's but that's um, because it's a class C network. These three numbers don't change unless you change networks, but in this problem we're only in one network. And then why is this 17? Well, it's 17 because we know that we're in subnet number one and that subnet one doesn't change and that we can't use all the zeros because that's the subnet ID. So we can use the minimum that we can have is one here. And then the maximum is one less than all ones. So that's from 17 to 30. Hopefully that makes subnet masks make a little bit more sense and how to find the valid host range from that. If you get confused with this, just think of the subnet that you're in as being an extension of the network and, tr and keep that subnet constant to figure out the valid host range. And then remember that you can't use all zeros and you can't use all ones because all zeros is going to be your subnet mask ID and all ones is going to be your broadcasting address. Hopefully that clears a few things up and I hope you have a wonderful day.